Hello. It's good to see you. Today we are going to be making a pan of my mother's uh, dressing. Dressing. When I was growing up, um, my mother at Thanksgiving would buy a turkey breast. She normally would not get the whole turkey. She would just get a turkey breast. We didn't really do a lot for Thanksgiving. My dad doesn't really like Thanksgiving type stuff, so she would have to make a separate meal for him. And we didn't go visit family. Like nobody in my family really does anything for Thanksgiving. My grandparents didn't, my parents didn't. Like nobody really did anything for any holiday. <laughs> uh, but one thing we would do every year, my mom would make a pan of dressing. And I loved it. I've always loved it. Um, it's a very simple recipe. Actually, it's right on the back of the bag. Now, my mother would not measure anything. We will be measuring in this video because I'm just going to follow the recipe. My mother did a lot of cooking by feel. She didn't measure things out unless it was something very specific, like if she was making uh, candy or, or fudge or something where you had to be a little bit more precise. Normally, she just cooked by feel. She just had a feel for how much to add, you know, how much of something to add. So, but yeah, we're going to be making a pan of dressing, and my mother would make this after she made the turkey breast. She would cut, as she would take part of that turkey that was cooked, cut it in a little, you know, kind of shred it, make small pieces, and add it to this dressing. Now, she did not stuff, we never stuffed the turkey. That was something that she just didn't do, partly because we didn't have a whole turkey. I guess you could stuff a chicken, a turkey breast, but she didn't. But I'm going, to show, I'm going to show you the stuff that you need to make this if you want to make it just like my mom used to make it. Now, first and foremost, you, you have to use Pepperidge Farm herb seasoned classic stuffing. Now, Pepperidge Farm does make different types of stuffing. They have a cornbread stuffing. Um, they have ones with different blends of seasonings to them. This is the one my mother would always get. It's white and wheat breads blended with herbs and spices. And it tastes exactly the same as it did when I was a kid. So I've picked up a bag of this herb seasoned Pepper Pepperidge Farm classic stuffing. And of course you can use this also if you're stuffing a turkey. I mean, you can use it either way. But we're going to do it the way my mom did it. So you, you need one bag of this. This is a little 12 ounce bag of Pepperidge Farm. I have a pan here. I don't know if this pan's gonna be the right size or not. You don't need a deep thing because this, this is where the dressing's gonna go and it's only gonna be maybe an inch thick. Um, you can make it thicker if you want to, but I'm gonna make it the way she did. She liked to leave part of it a little bit thinner which is kind of nice because the thinner it is, the crunchier the texture is going to be. It's going to have a crunchier um, bite to it, which I always kind of liked. So you don't have to spread it perfectly evenly over the pan. And if this pan's not big enough, I have I have more pans, so it's not a big deal. This is just a medium-sized Wilton little pan here. You're also going to need some butter. Now today I'm using Countryside Creamery Sweet Cream Unsalted Butter from Aldi. You're only going to need four tablespoons, so I think it's half, like half a stick of butter. And that's going to be part of the mix for the stuffing. You also need some broth. Now, my mother would always use chicken broth. Um, I don't think it really matters, but I'm trying to make it as close to hers as possible. So, I picked up this 32-ounce carton of Great Value chicken broth. It doesn't matter. You can get any kind you want to. Um, Oh, there's a recipe on it for chicken tortilla soup. It might be good. If I have any left over, maybe I'll... Oh, that sounds really good. I might make that. Because I don't actually need a whole lot of this. I mean, I, I'm going to need some of it, but definitely not. This was the smallest container of broth I could find. And, of course, you're going to need some turkey. Over here, I have a turkey breast that I prepared yesterday. We've eaten some of it, and I have in plenty on here to make this with, and I will have some left over for sandwiches and stuff later. But we're going to be cutting up some turkey for that. Now, this recipe also calls for onion. My mother hates onions, so she never added onions to anything, and she certainly didn't add it to this. 
You are also going to need some celery. So I picked up a package of celery at the store. You won't need anywhere near this much. This is just a stalk of celery. And what we're going to do, we're going to take this celery and clean it. Strip the dental floss out of it. Cut it up. We're going to add that to it. Now this whole process starts with a saucepan. Now in that saucepan, we're just going to have the butter and the celery and we're going to blend those together, heat them up, get them all nice and married. Then we're going to add it to the dressing mix and the turkey. This is going to be the easiest recipe you ever saw and it's a great way to use up some leftover turkey and stuff. So let's get started with the saucepan. We now have our, our pot here. We're going to add the butter. I have no idea why I put it in this bowl. It's not like it's going to pour. I have it, I guess. I could have cut it up a little bit, but that would have made too much sense. Oh, it's already started to melt. So, we're going to let this butter melt in here. I can't really cut it with this silicone thing. <laughs> it's melting pretty fast. Look at it. That's pretty nice smells good <laughs> now again this recipe does call for onion but my mom never added onion to it my mother hates onion anything onion flavored onion anything so it calls for um, a cup of chopped celery my mom would always just say just cut it till you get tired of cutting it and then put it in there she never measured it she would just cut till she got tired of cutting and then put it in there. It's it, it really honestly when it comes to this sort of stuff, it, if it's not exact, it doesn't really matter. Like we're leaving out an entire ingredient, we're leaving out the uh, onions, and it it doesn't matter. Like I was saying earlier, um, hi hey, Evie. I was saying earlier, we didn't really ever do anything for Thanksgiving, so, but this was one thing I always looked forward to, because she really only ever made this at Thanksgiving. She didn't ever really make it any other time of the year, so I would always kind of look forward to it. Gosh, that that's half a stick of butter right there. That's four tablespoons of butter. I'm going to go ahead and just put this in. This is my celery it's it's not quite a cup but it's close enough so you want to mix these together and you want to get to the point that the celery is tender crisp I have no intention of tasting it at this point so I'm just going to have to assume when it reaches a tender crisp status and I will just go from there. This helps to kind of tenderize the celery a little bit before you bake it. These are also the steps that you want to follow if you're making stuffing to put in your turkey according to the bag of Pepperidge Farm stuffing mix. But no, we never put this in. We never used to do stuffing. It was just a a pan of dressing. It's good stuff. You can smell the mixture of the butter and the celery and it's so lovely. It really does smell good. Butter just makes everything smell and taste so much better. This may look like a lot of butter but it's gonna go a long way. I thought there was egg in this recipe but apparently there's not. I always thought she put egg in it, but the recipe actually does not call for any egg. So I guess I some sort of strange false memory there. <laughs> the Mandela effect. didn't make any any of this at Thanksgiving. I didn't. I thought about it, but I ended up not doing it. 
Now after this reaches the point of being tender crisp, we're going to add two cups of chicken broth to it and just heat it through. You don't have to bring it to a bowl or anything, you just want to heat it through just to kind of blend all these flavors together, I guess. Mix it all up. And then it's really easy. After we do that, all we have to do is add a, this in a big pot to the stuffing mix. Mush it all together, pat it out in a pan, and then bake it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That's it. It's very easy. And of course, you can you can use any kind of stuffing mix you want to. You don't have to use this Pepperidge Farm herb seasoned kind, but. That's just the one that my mom always bought. It's the only kind she would ever use. I'm just kind of keeping it moving around a little bit. I'm watching a pot just sit there without stirring it. So my mother was always very adamant about that. Don't leave it sitting. You need to keep stirring it. Whatever it is, keep stirring it. doesn't cook or bake anymore. She she never really enjoyed it and once she got to a point that she didn't have to do it anymore, she just stopped. She's 82, so I guess she's earned that. <laughs> she's earned that right, I guess. If she doesn't want to do it. exactly sure what tender crisp looks like. <laughs> I don't know. It definitely feels softer though. The butter's starting to simmer a little bit. tender crisp. Now I've got my two cups of chicken broth here. Get that in there. Now we don't have to bring it to a bowl. Again, like I said, we just want to kind of stir it up and heat it, heat it through. Oh, we got, it looks like soup. Smells really good. Hmm. I don't know that I need to keep stirring it quite so much now. We're just heating it up. And then I get to show you my mixing bowls. I'm excited about that. I want to show. I always have to show you my mixing bowls. And um, 
We're going to use the largest one to mix this up. And um, I don't believe you have to grease the pan that you put it in, but I, I may I may grease it a little bit anyway because I do remember sometimes that it seems like it seemed like the, the, the dressing kind of stuck to the pan a little bit. So I may spray it with a little bit of a nonstick cooking spray or something just to just to be sure. I don't know. It might have been the pan she was using. She had this old old pan that she would use for dressing. I think it was the one she used to make biscuits with. It wasn't like a non-stick pan or anything. That maybe why it stuck to it. But yeah, it's, I mean, you know, there are a few steps, but the ingredients are very simple. It's really not, not anything fancy at all. Very easy. I can definitely feel the heat. Okay, I'm going to let this heat up just a little bit more. And then we're going to take this. We're going to add it to our dressing mix. Well, before we add the uh, broth and the celery and butter, we have to cut up some turkey. Now, this is not going to be on the recipe. It's not going to be in the recipe on the back of the dressing. You basically add whatever you want to. The more, if you want more, you add more. My mother never added a specific amount. It was kind of like the celery. She would just keep, you know, cutting some off the, off the breast until she just got tired of it. And there's no, you don't have to cut it any certain way. You just want to make, you just want to make little small pieces. Any, any old way. If you just, if you like to just cut up some meat, you go like this step. You can shred it by hand. You can do it with a fork and knife. I personally do not like to handle food with my hands. It, it just, I just don't. I'd rather spend all day doing it this way. <laughs> I, I don't want to do it by hand. I don't, I hate that feel. I got this turkey breast at Aldi and it, it's really good. It's actually very yummy. This was about all I had left. I didn't really have a lot left. We tore it up. <laughs> It's okay if the turkey is shredded or, or whatever. It doesn't matter. You can leave the pieces bigger if you like them that way. You just keep cutting until you get it all where you want it. Okay, I, I think I basically got it where I want it. And you can see these are just little... I basically cut them up as small as I would if I was giving some to my cats. I give them, I give them these little pieces like this. So, and I was going to mention too, um, you don't have to just use turkey. If you had, like, say you bought a rotisserie chicken and you had some left over, you could use that in here. Um, or if you had some a turkey that was a little dry, even if your meat is a little bit dry, it's still going to be fine in this recipe because you have that chicken broth that you're going to add to it. And it's a way to kind of, it, you might be able to use some of your dry turkey that way. So now that I've got it all, all shredded, we're going to get everything and we're going to mush everything together now. But before we get started, I have to show you my pretty bowls. I have one, two, three, four bowls. I found these at an antique store, but they're not, they're not antiques though. Um, aren't they cute? Look at these cute little things. They're made by Zach Designs, Z-A-K. Yeah, they're not, they're not super old. I just happened to find them at an antique store. So for this one, um, we're going to use this larger outer bowl to mix everything in. I think, well, I think that'll be big enough. <laughs> we'll see. 
The first thing we're going to do is add our uh, stuffing mix in here. Oh, it smells just like it did when I was a kid. It smells exactly the same. Okay. Okay, go ahead and put this uh, turkey in here. I'll take this and kind of just stir that in there. My mom would just get in there with her hands, but I don't, I don't like doing that. Okay, now we have our heated butter celery and broth mixture. We're going to pour that over and mix it all up. And instantly the, the stuff starts to wilt. You don't have to add any extra seasonings or anything. The breadcrumbs are already seasoned. And if you don't like this kind, like I said, they, they do make other flavors if you prefer something a little different. So you can see those pieces of turkey in there and the celery. Mm. It just wouldn't seem right to add onions because she she never did and I ate so much of, of her dressing that it just would feel weird to put onions in it. I like onions personally. I never even got to try onions until I was in middle school and spent the weekend with a friend of mine and I think her dad made burgers or something to put onions on them and it was so good. I loved it. Like, man, I didn't know these, I didn't know onions were so good. <laughs> okay. Now I've got my pan here that I sprayed with some nonstick cooking spray. And all we have to do is just mush this down in there and spread it out. Oh, it's so warm. <laughs> And it's going to be kind of lumpy. I mean, it's not going to be like a perfect thickness or whatever. That's okay. And you can just use your little whatever to mush it out the way you want it. You can make it thinner or thicker. After we get this spread out, we're going to bake it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 minutes or until uh, kind of a, it'll turn sort of a golden brown color. And if you want it to be more uh, crunchy, you can bake it uncovered. My mom would kind of do it half and half. She would bake it covered with a little bit of aluminum foil. Just put some aluminum foil over it for about half of that time and then for the second half she would remove the foil and let it bake for the rest of the time uncovered. And you just keep mushing it and mushing it. It's, it's very pliable now because you've softened it up with that uh, broth and everything. So it's not crunchy anymore. But again, you're not going to get it. It's not going to be perfect. I mean, I guess you could sit here and mush on it all day long, but why? Don't you have better things to do? I know I do. You just basically get it where you want it. Okay? And again, if you, if you want it to be less uh, crisp, less crunchy, you're going to cover this with foil before you bake it for approximately 40 minutes. If you want it more crunchy, you leave the foil off. Or do like my mom did and cook it half the time with the foil, half the time without. Any old way you want to do it. All right. I'm going to go bake this at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes with foil on. 
and then I'm going to bake it for another 20 minutes with the foil off and then I'll bring it back and show it to you and we'll see what this looks like once it's all done. Oh, it's back and it's nice and toasty. It's very warm and beautiful. Now, my mom, when she cut it, you want to cut it? She would just use a knife or whatever. She didn't really care. She wasn't really worried about the pan getting messed up. I don't want to do that, so I would actually just use a little spatula. And it's very easy. You just basically just kind of push it down through. And I did use a non-stick cooking spray on it. And now, this is very easy to store. What my mom would do is she would let it cool. You know, let everybody have however much they want. And then the dressing that's left over, you can just take the cut pieces and it'll hold together better after it cools off. She would just stack the cut pieces on a plate or put them in a, a reusable container and just put the lid on it or stack it in a plate and cover it with a uh, plastic wrap or aluminum foil and just keep them in the uh, in the refrigerator and when you want some you just go in there and take a few pieces out and heat it up in the microwave or whatever you want to do. But let's go ahead and get a piece of this out and we will give it a try. All right, we have our dressing ready to taste. Now, a lot of times I just eat this with my hands. Like I don't like to prepare it and get my hands in it, but once it's done, you can just pick it up like a piece of bread basically and just bite it. But you can see our little bits of, there's a little bit of celery in there. It's, oh, there's a little piece peeking out over here and our turkey is here. Oh, it smells so good. And like I said, you know, the, the herbs and the seasoning and everything are already in the breadcrumbs from Pepperidge Farm, so you don't have to add anything unless you want to. Now, sometimes what I will do with this is I will take some gravy, and um, so I'll heat up the dressing and just put a little gravy over the top of it and just eat it like that. It's really good, especially if it's a little bit more dry than you wanted it to be put a little gravy over the top takes care of that but now when you eat dressing like this it would tend to break apart on you um, like see pieces just kind of they just kind of separate away you just eat them eat them as they come to you mm. just like my mom's Oh, it's absolutely perfect. It's so good. And some of the little pieces of bread on the top will be a little bit crunchy because, as I mentioned, I did half of it. I did the first half, the first 20 minutes with it covered in full. And for the second 20 minutes, I took the full off. And that's the way my mom would do it. So it was just a little bit crunchy. Not, not totally crunchy kind of in the middle and that's the way she liked it and oops and I think that's the best way to do it it's very crumbly mm. it's wonderful mm. it's very easy to store you just cut it up like I showed you and put the pieces on a plate or in a reusable um, container of some sort just keep it in the refrigerator and get it out and just heat it up as you need it and it's wonderful. The gravy really comes in handy after a day or so when it starts to get a little bit dried out. Um, yeah, just put a little gravy over it or put a little bit of gravy like right here on your plate and then you can just take a little piece of your dressing, you know. Oh, this one's got turkey in it. Take a little piece and just kind of swirl it around in the gravy. Mm hmm so good um you can make your own gravy personally i don't like making my own gravy my, my gravy always comes out lumpy this is a good this is a good gravy right here good gravy this is heinz home style gravy roasted turkey flavor and they have larger jars of it as well and they come with little recipes on the back like there's one here for turkey leftover casserole which takes mashed potatoes, turkey, and gravy, and 
and stuffing. So it's kind of like what we just made. But this stuff is great. And it comes in this little glass jar like this. And all you have to do is heat it and eat it. That's it. Of course, you want to refrigerate any of it that you don't use. They have other flavors too. But this roasted turkey one, that's really good. It's inexpensive and it's super convenient. So whenever I want a little bit of gravy, I pick up a jar of this. And this is what I bought to eat with this pan of dressing right here. So I will have, I will have a little bit of gravy to go with my dressing. I probably won't eat any today. I want to be able to fully taste it at this point. But again, after you've refrigerated it a little bit, I find that a little bit of gravy kind of helps with the dryness a little bit. So yeah, here is my mom's uh, dressing that we make in a pan. And it's very good. It may not be very pretty to look at, but it's really delicious. It's super good. It's a great way to use up some leftover turkey and have a yummy little dish to enjoy either by itself or with other things. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed getting to see my mom's pan of dressing. And I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you again soon.